Hello, everybody, and welcome to this special Department of Health series on men's health. I'm Tim Lampley. Today's topic, Breathe Better, Live Better, focuses on the awareness of lung health for men. Joining me now for this much needed discussion is Bobby Williams, the program manager for the Department of Health, Laura Turner from the American Lung Association, and Greg Tumlin, a smoker who's trying to quit from the Fathers and Family Support Center. Bobby, Laura, and Greg, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Now, before we begin, Bobby, tell us why it was important for the Department of Health to create this series. So for the most part, awareness around men's health has been reserved for June, Men's Health Month. Men's health is essential to our community. And we know that the risks that men face can greatly be reduced with accurate information, resources to build healthier lifestyles, which include regular exercise, healthy eating, limited stress, no tobacco use, and getting routine checkups and health screenings. Uh, now let's turn our attention to smoking and men's health. So when you have a cigarette, for instance, you're inhaling thousands of chemicals into the lungs. Smoking is the leading cause of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, better known as COPD and lung cancer. And that's where we'll get into the meat and potatoes of this discussion. Um, Bobby, talk to me more in depth about the damage smoking causes for men. Will do. So October is National Lung Health Month. And so we wanted to kick off October on this important topic. Men who smoke are at risk for heart disease, lower respiratory disease, stroke, and diabetes. All, nearly all lung cancers are attributable to smoking. Um, we also know that lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer deaths in men, both in the United States and worldwide. Though men are historically more likely to develop the disease than women, the number of men and women diagnosed each year has been reaching a parity. Can we talk a little bit about e-cigarettes and the dangers that uh, it causes as well? Yeah, sure. Um, although they've been marketed as an aid to help people quit smoking, e-cigarettes have not received the Food and Drug Administration approval as smoking cessation devices. And a recent study found that most people who intended to use e-cigarettes to kick the nicotine habit actually ended up continuing to smoke both traditional and e-cigarettes. You know, lung cancer is the leading cause of uh, cancer deaths, as I mentioned, and both in the United States and worldwide. But do we know why Black men have the highest rates of lung cancer in the U.S.? So we at the Department of Health believe there are several contributing factors to that. We know that Black men are less likely to, to have health insurance. We know Black men are less likely to seek out uh, help from a, care, a healthcare provider if, some, if they're experiencing signs or symptoms. So we believe this and a plethora of other reasons contribute to that statistic. Tell me some of the recent statistics here uh, uh, related to cancer deaths. So we know that according to 2020 statistics issued by the American Cancer Society, that around 228,820 cases of lung cancer are projected to be diagnosed in the US. 116,300 of those will be men and 112,520 will be women. Around 135,720 Americans will die from lung cancer and 72,500 of whom will be men and 63,220 of whom will be women. Wow, wow. Those statistics are frightening. Uh, Greg, I wanna bring you in. Uh, as someone who smokes, this has got to scare the bejesus out of you. No. Um, actually, did you, I, say, did you say no? Wait, no? No, no it right. doesn't? Hearing those statistics don't scare you. No, I, I think that people who, uh, people who are t addicted to nicotine are, are less likely to be afraid of the statistics. Those who are afraid are the ones who don't smoke. Once you are addicted, it's... it's it's hard to just stop because of the the, the sheer numbers. <clears throat> I see. So, so you you feel like uh, perhaps that uh, someone else might get cancer, but you don't see that as something that might happen to you. Well, I I I don't necessarily think that it's, it's always somebody else. It may be me, but the motivating factor for me to stop has to be something I'm looking forward to rather than something I'm afraid of. Well, tell us your story. I started smoking when I was 12 years old. Um, now that adds up to 
48 years of, of smoking. Um, I, um, I lost my mother to lung cancer. And, um, I'm, and I'm so, stunned. You, you lost your mother to cancer and that didn't motivate you to quit? I, it was, I was motivated for a while, but after a while, then no, uh, I continued to smoke. What about screen? Have you been screened for cancer? No, I haven't. And why, uh, why not? Frankly, because I, I'd rather stop smoking than, than find out. Uh, Laura, can you address why men don't get screened for cancer? There's a few reasons, and I think uh, Bobby might have more to add after I say my piece, but one of the big reasons um, it, for anyone is that lung cancer is such a stigmatized disease. Um, there's a lot of negativity around it more than other cancers, and um, you know that's for a lot of reasons, but um, I think that um, fear of, of um, not having a high chance of survival because it's typically caught late um, is what might keep people from getting screened. Um, and I really can understand why Greg would say that. Um, yeah, so stigma really is um, a huge player in um, why people would get screened or not screened for lung cancer. Do you want to add any, anything to that? Yeah, so we know that there's that pseudo machismo that men have where we're, we're conditioned, we're culturally conditioned to ignore our body signals um, that it gives to us when something is either about to happen or something is occurring in our bodies. Um, and we also know that men are, are less likely to have health insurance than women. We also know that men are half as likely, once again, to go and, and complete a uh, an appointment with a healthcare provider than women are. So all, once again, all these factors contribute to the fact why uh, black men, men overall and black men specifically, uh, would this would impact them more. Greg, Greg, I was wondering if there was more you wanted to say as well. Yes, yes, I really uh, would like to quit. And, I, and, and the reason I would like to quit is so that I can be a better example for the men that I serve as, as well as for my daughter. I, I really uh, believe that the images that young people see of people smoking encourages the whole uh, start of that cycle of addiction. And so the motivating factor for me is to be an example, a positive example of, of a, being a non-smoker. Have you taken steps already to in that direction? Yes, I have. Um, October first is my next stop date. I, I I must say that I have stopped for nine complete days uh, this past June. I'm better able uh, to approach this next stop date with some hope that it's going to continue and that I will be a non-smoker. Awesome! It's great to hear, uh, Laura. Who are the men that? should be getting screened and how often? So um, that category, the uh, eligibility is actually recently widened. Um, the US Preventative Services Task Force that oversees these sorts of things um, just this year updated their guidelines and it that doubled the number of people who are eligible for screening. Now I don't have it broken up by how many men, but um, if you have an idea, of that, we could probably make some assumptions, but um, it's, uh, let's see, it's about 14 million people in the US are eligible for screening. And it needs to be people who are 50 to 80 years of age. Um, they have a 20 pack year history, which means they smoked one pack a day for 20 years or two packs a day for 10 years. And they are a current smoker or have quit within the last 15 years. So this is just based on the best evidence we have today, but it is good news that more people can get screened. And can I return a little bit to what um, Greg said about trying to quit and uh, the road to, uh, to, to quitting uh, smoking? Uh, what steps should he be taking uh, uh, other than what he just mentioned? Uh, is there help for him? Uh, you know, what should he be doing? Uh, we recommend that people follow um, the FDA recommended medications. 
um, nicotine replacement therapy can be very successful for people. And um, people are more likely to quit if they do that, plus some counseling. Um, it can be a quit line. We, Missouri has a quit line. Um, it could be a group like our Freedom from Smoking, which Bobby is a facilitator of. Um, anything that's kind of a significant in-person support or over the phone support can really help increase those chances of quitting because it's uh, you start smoking socially, a lot of people do, and it only makes sense to quit smoking within that social context, context and have that support. Can I talk a little bit about our homes as well? Uh, being exposed to radon, for instance, for long periods of time can lead to lung cancer. Uh, how can men detect they have a radon problem at home? This is definitely something not enough people know about. And so we need more and more awareness about it. Um, radon gas is really common. It forms naturally and it enters a home through cracks in walls or basement floors, foundations and other openings. And because it comes from rock and soil, it can be found anywhere. So um, the tricky thing about radon is you can't see it or smell it and it can build up inside your homes and high levels can cause cancer, lung cancer. Um, so the best thing to do is just to test for radon. Really every home should be tested for radon. Um, your home could have elevated levels of radon while your neighbor's home does not. It's easy, it's inexpensive, and it could save your life. Thousands of lung cancer deaths could be avoided each year if um, home and building owners acted to test and fix. So something you could do today is reach out to the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services radon program. They offer free test kits. Um, and uh, you can get that information from Bobby, I believe, because I'll share it with him and he's sharing his number. And then there's also some um, radon companies that can do testing and mitigation as well. I love the line, thousands of lung cancer deaths can be prevented each year. On that note, we're gonna to have to wrap up, but uh, this was some great information about today's, uh, about men's health today and lung cancer awareness. Bobby, Laura, and Greg, thanks again for joining us. It's a discussion we need to continue throughout the year. Please out there, take it seriously. Your health depends on it. Go get those screenings. And please look out for more discussions here on STL TV in this series about men's health. In the meantime, if you need additional information, please contact the Department of Health at 314-657-1499 or visit stlewis-mo.gov health. That'll do it for now. I'm Tim Lampley. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>